Hey there folks, I'm Mark, in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse, and I want to be careful this week, it might be a bit confrontational, and this, it's Billboard Breakdown. I don't remember. So again, this is the sort of week on the Hot 100 that creates this weird sinking feeling in my gut. Not that it's precisely bad, by many accounts it just feels kind of normal, there's some real promise in some upcoming songs, but the devil's kind of in the details with this one, in that it reflects a feud that's reigniting again, and of which I've got to be careful talking about, especially as it appears that someone realized the feud was what was keeping eyes on the music, and desperate times calls for desperate measures. But before we get into all that, our top 10. We're holding the number one for another week as Last Night by Morgan Wallen. And given that it rules streaming and is still picking up a stronger airplay presence, you're going to need a big swing to take this down and I'm not really seeing from where it's coming from. Prime example, our brand new entry at number two, All My Life by Lil Durk featuring J. Cole. I'll talk about the song more later on, but it's a big swing. It certainly has the robust streaming to break through, but any sort of radio catch-up is gonna take time, especially when it cannot even beat Morgan Wallen on streaming. Now this puts Flowers by Miley Cyrus at number three at an odd position. The radio is definitely wavering, and with streaming and sales in the downswing, it's got inertia though to take its sweet time on the exit. That's not something I can really say for Kill Bill by SZA at number four, which given its airplay loss, it's in outright free fall. Then we have Ela Bela Sola by Eslabon Armano and Pesa Pluma at number five, which is finally seeing a little bit of radio, but it's also facing stiffer streaming competition. So it might be a little bit late in order to make a major push. Whereas Calm Down by Rima and Selena Gomez slid down to number six, more on loss of position than any activity of the song itself, given relative stability on the radio and streaming. Then we got Creepin' by Metro Boomin, 21 Savage, and The Weeknd at number seven. It's basically in radio freefall, and that's the majority of what it's got. But a higher peak there means that the drop off is probably going to be a little slower. It only barely held up over Favorite Song by Tusi at number 8, which slipped a bit on streaming, but is having a pretty good radio run in order to compensate. Then we got our next new entry to the top 10, and one that I am thrilled to see the cover of Fast Car by Luke Combs at number 9. The streaming is strong, the sales are strong, and apparently the label was so blindsided by how much this has taken off that they've actually decided to say screw it throw some radio support behind it where it's also picking up fast not the only song with Luke Combs on it that I can see being massive in coming months but this one I absolutely called thrilled to see it Oh, and finally, Antihero by Taylor Swift is clinging on to number 10. This is one of those cases where the radio is really slow to get rid of her, and other songs are just falling off faster around her. It happens. And on that note are losers and dropouts, and let's start off with the latter category, because we actually had some really big ones, albeit somewhat expected. I predicted these. Lavender Haze by Taylor Swift, it's gone, along with Escapism by Ray and 070 Shake, handily clinching their year-end list spots for 2023. As well as Bebe Dame by Fuerza Regida and Grupo Frontera, Que Vilvas by Karen Leon and Grupo Frontera, it's likely gonna fall short of any year end list. Now, our losers, I gotta admit, I'm a little bit surprised by them. I mean, sure, off the debut Go Hard by Lil Baby skidded down to 81, but I honestly thought El Gordo Tre El Mando by Chino Pacas had more momentum, but apparently it's down at 72. I guess on better news, Sunrise by Morgan Wallen is finally fading away at 99, but most pleasingly, Slut Me Out by Enelie Chapa looks like the novelty is finally fading. It's down to 51. Keep going. Unfortunately, when we look at our gains, no returns again this week. It's a much rougher list. Let's get the worst one out of the way first. Mathematical Disrespect by Lil Mabu is up to 47 because he went viral. The song's not worth dignifying any further. But it is frustrating that more rap debuts from last week that I didn't like also saw traction. Like Shape Something by DaBaby up to 74. And what it is, Block Boy by Dochi featuring Kodak Black is up to 80. I, I guess I could take some solace and area codes by Kali getting a nice boost to 33. I know some folks are kind of surprised that I like the song, especially in comparison to the original area codes, but again, I'll say it, I think this works. Outside of that, 
religiously by Bailey Zimmerman saw a sharp spike up to 40, and Waffle House by the Jonas Brothers is up to 57. A song of which I'm not gonna say is all that good, but I am warming to it more than I personally expected. It's gonna be fascinating if it becomes a minor hit. Well anyway, we actually have a pretty stacked list of new arrivals here, so let's start off with number 98, I Heard by Young Boy Never Broke Again. So, uh, Young Boy dropped another mixtape literally a couple weeks after his proper album. His new mixtape is actually now doing more on the Hot 100, so somebody at his label should be getting fired. But what's truly jarring are the possible reasons why, linked to the ongoing beef between Young Boy Never Broke Again and Lil Durk, which may have been squashed momentarily, according to DJ Academics, at the beginning of this month, but that appears not to have lasted all that long. Given now the predilections for escalation, given how records are going head to head, I'm not going to comment in any sort of street agitation that's irresponsible. I will say here that Youngboy sounds even more manic and paranoid than usual, as his bars will fly wildly off rhythm as he's hearing plenty of rumors and he's looking to respond with violence to all of them, where it doesn't appear like he's sleeping or eating all that well can't even trust his own mother. I mean, I'm not gonna deny that the song actually goes pretty hard in the production, even with all the weird filmy layers weaving around the pianos, the bells, and the percussion in the mix. Although, putting that death cough at the end of his hook, it is pushing it. But while Young Boy Never Broke Again sounds more focused, the uneasy reality that comes with his rage and how he might act out makes this tough to support. I mean, it's certainly effective. I'm not sure I'm gonna go back to it all that much. Just saying. Number 95, Your Heart or Mine by John Party. Hey, what do you know? John Party is finally pushing my favorite song from his last album months after it dropped. And what I'm kind of amused by is that by his usual neo-traditional standards, this is probably his most overproduced song on that album, with the jagged synth effects slathered all over the guitar, the fiddle, and the pedal steel to pair with the stomp clap. Hell, it even occasionally impacts his vocals. And the funny thing is, for him at least, I don't mind it as much. The song is a little sleazy in the underground hookup. It plays in a minor key, which is actually a good fit for John Party's nasal drawl, go back to a song like Dirt On My Boots. He's outside of his usual comfort zone, and the darker swing of this production kind of makes sense with that vibe. I, I don't know, it feels like the sort of track where the production should kill it for me, but I think the composition's really strong, and the atmosphere comes together. I think this works. Really good song. Check it out. Number 94, Everything She Ain't by Haley Witters. Believe me, honey, good as money in the bank. I'm everything she is and everything she ain't. Well, about time this broke through. I've been covering Haley Witters in the indie scene since 2020, many considering her 2022 album to be her biggest shot to date. Unfortunately, the song being pushed isn't Boys Back Home, or College Town, or Middle of America with American Aquarium. We can't all be that lucky. And I gotta be honest, I've never really been a big fan of this track. Where against a very jaunty hand clap, the fiddle, the sandy percussion, and that weird creaking sound underscoring the chipper vibes, Haley Witters tries to convince a guy to leave his current girlfriend for her because Witters is everything she ain't. I mean, it's not quite as dark as a gender swap to treat you better, and Witters seems to get that this is playing for more lightweight melodrama, but it still feels kind of cloying to me, not especially all that likable, especially given that it's targeted at men, but it's predominantly marketed for girls who want to idolize like Haley Witters fit in her shoes. I mean, it's just not for me. I'd probably skip it. Number 87, Fuck the Industry, Part 2 by Young Boy Never Broke Again. Yeah, this was the song in which I was dreading the conversation. Because if Young Boy was looking to maintain any industry connections, he sets them ablaze with this one. Let's start with the big one. Young Boy is not happy that Drake continues to work with Lil Durk. And after getting a FaceTime call to connect with Drake, courtesy of Jay Prince, Young Boy fired shots at Drake, including dissing Jay Prince directly. 
world-class intellect we got here. He also apparently went at J. Cole, where they were apparently set to record together in 2021, and then Youngboy was eight hours late and didn't show up, and J. Cole didn't want to reschedule, so I guess fuck him too. And for good measure, he calls Lil Yachty a homophobic slur in between the paranoid threats and the flexing... Am I supposed to root for this? I mean, there's a big difference between playing the villain and then showcasing a death wish in the industry with some of these shots. It's reckless to a frankly insane degree, and when the bass beat is so sloppily mastered against the piano loop and the muddy percussion, I just have no desire to go back to this. I mean, Youngboy got the attention he wanted. I just really hope it doesn't end quite as badly as it very well could. Number 85, Bury Me in Georgia by Kane Brown. I guess I shouldn't be that surprised that it took this long for Kane Brown to push another single. Thank God is still doing well. If you look at the chart performances off of this 2022 album, they've been remarkably solid for the singles. And now with the album opener, well, it's an odd one, I gotta say that. Basically, he walks through his potential funeral arrangements with a striking amount of detail against this southern rock bluesy stomper with bells, squealing fiddle, banjo, some guitar with some actual muscle, and a lot of fried out vocal filters and yet bizarrely the bass groove here does not have the muscle that it should i don't know give this a jay joyce to produce instead of dan huff it would probably hit harder but i think what gets more actively distracting is that we have no context around kane brown's funeral just feels like a dirge that's a really bizarre opener for an album even if i do get the southern gospel tradition in which this is rooted again it's not bad it's just weird for a single that's all. Number 84, Acrostico by Shakira. You know, I'm so glad that Shakira is back in the swing of releasing music fairly regularly, and it's so nice that there's an audience she still has to stick around and get her some charting success. Now all we need is for the music to be really good, and for this... Yeah, you know what? It's a nice tune. A spare piano ballad with a bit of echoing percussion where her children actually feature on the hooks for a really sweet mother-children ballad, trying to support them as time goes on in the wake of Shakira's impending divorce. I I'm sure that because I don't speak Spanish, some of the poetry is probably lost on me, but this does feel very mature and well-presented from the translation, and I'm also happy that Shakira's ex isn't getting legal involved for featuring the kids on the song or in the music video. I mean, it's not really something I'm going to revisit much, but there is an intimate sweetness I pick up on that I appreciate. This is some good stuff. And you know what? On that note, number 66, Life Goes On by Ed Sheeran featuring Luke Combs. Easy come, hard go, then life goes on. Maybe it's just me being optimistic here, or riding on the high of predicting just how well the cover of Fast Car will do, but I think with this remix featuring Luke Combs, if promoted properly, Ed Sheeran could have a bona fide smash hit with this song. I could see this dominating radio, especially adult alternative, maybe even breaking the top 10. I mean, you probably need streaming to get on board to make it work, but Ed Sheeran's on Atlantic. That can happen. And if you want one last grand slam to end his hit making tenure before he probably goes indie, there would be poetry ending it off with this. The acoustics are amazingly well balanced with the slight piano twinkles and the subtle strings. And well, Ed Sheeran's voice can be a little bit too forward, sound very raw and shredded as he's trying to process tangible grief at his friend who passed away and the necessity of moving on when he's not quite ready. Then Luke Combs' warmer timbre comes in and the two of them have some great harmonic interplay, the sort of communal processing of pain that thematically works for this sort of song. And even if melodically the composition does feel pretty standard, it is a prime example of doing the basics extraordinarily well. Let's make it a hit. This is a great song. Number 62, Bitch Let's Do It by Young Boy Never Broke Again. Can't 
okay, seriously, we gotta go back to this now? The first song on the album? Or mixtape? I mean, it's... Uh, I like the piano flourish, even if the whirring trap percussion is really shoddily mastered against the synth horn, and then young boys drawling, offbeat shouting, where he flubs rhymes and just leaves in the mix where he drops off beat and that's to try to hop back on it. And from there... I mean, it's the flexing, the threats, the paranoid ranting, threatening to stab a woman in the private parts, forgiving him attitude. Uh, again, I understand the appeal is how lurid and shocking this all is, but when you pair that with how sloppy of an MC that young boy can be, alongside the sheer amount of material that hits the exact same notes and content and tone, I mean, the shock value wears off in record time. So no, I don't like this either. Pass. And finally, number two, All My Life by Lil Durk featuring J. Cole. They be trying to keep me down. All this time. All this time. So the big publicity behind this song is that, on its own, it beat the majority of what Youngboy was shoveling out in terms of the streaming metrics. I wouldn't chalk all this up to Lil Durk. He's popular, but the majority of his commercial success has been tied into featuring with bigger acts. But at least he can maintain a stable relationship with someone and some of his co-stars. Unfortunately, that also includes Dr. Luke, who produced this with probably the easiest paycheck he ever cashed, with the brittle trap percussion and the very muted piano to support a goddamn children's choir on the hook. And while I'm very normally reticent on children's choirs, it does kind of fit the aspirational vibes that Lil Durk and J. Cole want to pursue here. I actually think Durk's verse is very solid, talking about the systemic changes that need to happen as he personally works to better himself. And I liked how he pushed back against those who were mocking the stimulus checks. He was right that for the folks who got it, it really helped push back against debt. It helped change lives. J. Cole's verse, you know what, it's also pretty good too. Especially coming off the intro where he claps back against some of the cops, but it also feels a bit more self-focused than it should on what he wants to pursue in terms of his rap career, whether or not he should retire or he, that he needs to peak. But I also appreciate how he highlights so many up-and-coming rappers who become known for their deaths rather than their music popping off. And I like that he takes shots at rap media who will then capitalize and clickbait on that death. He wants them to get paid, he wants them to grow old, these rappers. I can't deny that's a good focus. But I don't know, the potential was there for this to be a really great pop crossover. I think it's missing that third gear to really ramp up in the production off J. Cole's verse for the final hook. So yeah, it is good. I will not call it great. Now granted, it is better than anything from Young Boy Never Broke Again this week, who is getting both the bottom spots with Fuck the Industry Part 2 as the worst, and Bitch Let's Do It as the dishonorable mention. Now for the best... Yeah, I don't think it's contest. Life Goes On by Ed Sheeran featuring Luke Combs. It kind of runs away with it. But I'm giving honorable mention to John Party for Your Heart and Mine. It's a bit of a weird pivot for him, especially, but I really like it. Now, next week... I mean, I sadly don't expect anything from Kesha's new album, even if that could be really cool. Same from Katrin Mime, if I'm being honest. But we do have that Summer Walker AP and a big Beyonce remix with featuring Kendrick Lamar, so stay tuned for that. But until then, I'm Mark. You're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse. And I'll see you next time.